Hello students, welcome to the new topic Diagrammatic and Graphic Presentation of the Data and it is presented by Shantala Kulkarni, Department of Statistics, Gokhti Piyu College of Commerce and Science. So in today's lesson, we are the word itself says that diagrammatic and graphic presentation means whatever the data is there, we are going to represent that in the form of diagram, graph and we are going to make it more attractive. So diagrammatic and graphic presentation of data. See what it says, even though tabular presentation of data is more convincing, they are not interesting because of numerical figures. To make the data easy to understand even by a layman at a glance, diagrams and graphs are used. Just one diagram is enough to represent a given data more effectively than thousand words. So in this lesson, we will be learning in detail about the types of graphs or the types of diagrams you are going to study for the POC 1. It is very true, diagrams, pictures as children or as any human being, pictures are more attractive. See, you first thing that you notice is a picture, then you notice the figures, then you notice the numbers. So to make it more attractive, layman means a common man. Statistics is a subject where only the experts can deal, only if you have a basic knowledge. But when you have to show something to the common man, that is the time when you will be using the diagrams and graphs because looking just to the diagrams, you will know what the data is. Like if, if in a class you want to represent the number of boys and girls, you will show it in a simple bar diagram. So diagrams are the best representation for the common man to understand about the data importance and need why diagrams and graphs are important we will see those points first one they are attractive and hence diagrams and graphs are commonly used in newspapers magazines for the purpose of advertisements and campaigns true because they are attractive if you see the newspaper anywhere if you see the first thing what our eyes catches is a diagrams that which is colorful Second point is they give birds eyes view of the entire data at a glance. Just by a simple, see birds eyes view means even if a bird is at a very very uh, uh, height at, in the sky, it can look to the prey, it, I mean clearly from there. So you have a clear view at one go. Third point is they can be easily understood by the common man. Yeah, even a common man who doesn't have any basic knowledge of statistics, he can understand what the diagram is telling. Fourth point, they can be remembered for a longer period of time, true. Then they facilitate comparison, they facilitate comparison means they help to compare. So what are the importance or need for diagrams, these are the five points you have to write and this can be a five mark question in theory. Next, there are certain general rules for constructing diagrams and graphs, you have to remember, they are the common rules and regulations which you have already done in your school life. So it's just a repetition of uh, these things and this also can be a one mark or even it may be a two mark question, they may ask just mention two rules for constructing diagrams and graphs or it may even be a five mark question. They may say please mention the rules for constructing diagrams and graphs. If it is 5 marks, you will be writing 5 points. If it is 2 marks, you will be writing 2 points. And if it is a 1 mark question, you will be writing 1 uh, point of your choice. So let's see what are the rules, the general rules. The first one, every diagram should have a suitable title and is written above it. Yes. Second one, proper scale according to the size of a paper should be selected. Yeah, you need to choose the scale. Usually when you do the diagrams, it is on always most of the time it's on the graph or if you're doing on a computer, the proper scale has to be uh, taken. Third, it should be neat and attractive. Yes. Fourth point, it should not be overloaded with more information. What information is needed? Only that you want to write. Fifth point. To indicate different parts, suitable shades, colors and crossings should be used means you have to make it more attractive to make it more specific. Suppose the data is having more, uh, if it's more heterogeneous and you want to give a different name, so you are going to use different shadings and all that. Sixth one is an index indic indicating different shades, colors, crossings, etc used should be shown clearly so whatever whichever color you are representing for example if you are presenting straight line for the girls you have to make an index and show it seven point it should be complete in all respects yeah it should be complete it shouldn't be it shouldn't look uh, uh, incomplete in the sense you don't have a heading you have not made an index nothing it should be neat it should be perfect 
and the eighth point it should be simple and self explanatory yes once you look into the diagram or once if you look into the graph you should get the detailed things of all the uh, data now let's see what are the type of diagrams you are going to study for the puc1 now in puc1 you will be studying one dimensional diagrams two dimensional diagrams and the types of diagrams actually what are there is three dimensional diagrams pictograms and cartograms for but for puc1 and 2 only two that is one dimensional and two dimensional now what is the meaning of this dimension dimension means going in only one direction suppose you are only going in particular length height only in one direction that is known as one di uh, dimensional if you are taking length and height together then it becomes two dimensional three dimensional means you are taking the three directions together length height width together so that is a three dimensional pictograms and cartograms are those which are there in the maps those where the india maps are there they are also they are known as pictograms and cartograms so for you all it's only one dimensional and two dimensional that's all so one dimensional diagram the diagrams drawn by considering only one dimension are called one dimensional diagrams they are mostly bar diagrams here only the height or length of the bar is considered some of the one dimensional diagrams what you are going to study for the puc1 is the first one is simple bar diagram then you have the multiple bar diagram then you have the component subdivided bar diagram then you have the percentage bar diagram so here also in diagram section you may get any one you may get a simple question on they may ask you please represent the data by simple bar diagram or multiple bar diagram or component it is also known as subdivided bar diagram or percentage bar diagram so you will be having one graph or one diagram from this chapter one diagram one uh, graph will be there for you all we will see what is a, a simple bar diagram so here in simple bar diagram to represent the data in rectangular bars of equal width and height proportional to the magnitude of the items are drawn with proper scale width of the bar is taken merely for attraction but it is nothing to do with the data it is used for the comparative study of two or more items of a single variable for example the figure of imports exports population etc for a few years are to be represented by simple bar diagram see you can represent any data of your choice in a diagram here we have given few examples it may be population it may be import it may be export even the results even your daily activity even your uh, playing games how much you have uh, won how much you have lost anything anything i'm just trying to tell you all anything can be represented in the form of a graph or in the form of a diagram now we will see some examples how i mean how a simple bar diagram is drawn what's the first example following figures represents the decadal change of population of india draw a simple bar diagram decadal means see in in our country we are taking the census uh after every 10 years so here we have taken the census population for over a period of time and this data we are going to represent it in the form of simple bar diagram so the year is starting from 1901 1911 1921 31 41 so on till 2011 the whole population and it is represented in millions the population here is uh, first one it is 238 then 258 see if you can see how the population is going in an increasing order now what you want to do here how do you decide the scale how do you plan now the proper scale what you want to see the highest value this is going to tell you the highest value that is the highest value 1210 here this is the scale here this is the y axis and this is the x axis you are going to represent years here all of them this they have told you know in the explanation this width is going to remain same you can take more as much as you want this width you can take as much as you want but this height what is there no you are going to decide according to the measurement or the data what is given here so the highest value now how you going how they have taken the scale here they have taken the scale 0 200 uh, gap of 2 to 100 and then the maximum here is 1400 the maximum value here is uh, 1210 so the uh, what's the first uh, year here 1901 
1901 it's marked here and the value is 238 approximately you are taking 200 400 in between is 300 so approximately 238 is going to be here this is how your mark similarly 258 you do the marking 251 then 278 318 you are doing the markings here the markings are here the uh, 300 all these markings come here yes this are these are the markings then next one is uh, 361 439 548 688 uh, then uh, sorry i'm so sorry 2001 is uh, 1028 and the last one is 1210 this is the highest value which is it is it is taking simple bar diagram is nothing but this is your y axis where you represent the population and your to the x axis you are representing the years we will see one more example represent the data regarding the population of different countries by simple bar diagram in this example what we are going to see there the population is represented of different countries uh, it's given and we are going to represent that in a simple bar diagram first china is given india is there usa indonesia brazil pakistan and bangladesh so who is the highest here the highest value is china that is uh, 1341 so similarly here also the population is taken along the y axis and their countries are represented along the x axis and this width this what width is there you can take as much as you want depending on the size of your uh, uh, what do you call it as uh, the page and if you pay attention you have a heading scale is mentioned and then shading is being done if you do not want to do the shading you can do some design like this or you do a star mark anything of your choice if you are going to do a star mark you have to do the star mark for all of them your one thing because the it is a common variable it's a single variable that is population it is representing for all of them if there are different components then you do different designs then the scale also is written here writing everything this systematically is very very important everything is written systematically here Uh, uh heading is there here you know it's written population in millions then uh, all the name country names are being presented everything is done systematically so basically what i'm trying to tell you uh, tell you all is when you going to represent a diagram everything should be done in a systematic and a proper way it should be neat and attractive very very important anything that is neat and attractive we are always attracted to that thing you never like anything that is dirty or shabby so keep in your mind whenever the diagrams or graphs are there your i mean those things are going to be very particular and neat you have ample examples in the textbook to practice so solve the example which is already solved or take the exercise part and solve the best thing is use a graph sheet uh, or a graph book of uh, 20 pages i think that's more than sufficient for the entire thing to be covered your know, graphs and diagrams will be covered so uh, draw and practice that and you will be having a question on this particular topic for 5 marks so children in today's class i just started with diagrammatic uh, presentation and you studied about one dimensional and under one dimensional how many what are the different types of diagram that is uh, one di uh, simple bar diagram multiple bar diagram then component or subdivided bar diagram then the percentage bar diagram in today's class you just saw what is a simple bar diagram and the examples on the two in every classes we will be dealing with the different types of uh, diagrams and same examples we will be solving i hope you people have understood thank you